Hello Internet, welcome to another topic in the series of computer and data networks. In today's topic, we'll discuss a very important uh, performance parameter uh, in determining network's performance, which is impairment. Now, first of all, we need to understand what is transmission impairment. Uh, transmission impairments are all the degradation that occurs during the transmission of a signal from uh, source to the destination. For example, if we send a signal from one radio station to uh, the public, uh, it might might just get um, degraded. I would say uh, I'm using the term degraded to put everything in in one word. Why does the signal degrade? This could happen because of various reasons. Some of them may be evident, some of them may be obvious, and some of them may may not be obvious, and some of them may be intermittent, some of them may be persistent. So we'll talk about ev everything that, that causes the signal to degrade in transmission impairment. So when we talk about uh, the main causes of transmission impairment, they can be uh, divided into three categories. One is attenuation, the next one is distortion, and the finally, and finally we have noise. So we'll t we'll talk about all three of them, and the sum total of their effect on the signal is known as transmission impairment. Uh, we'll talk about attenuation first. Attenuation means loss of energy. When a signal, uh, simple or composite, travels through a medium, it loses some of its energy in overcoming the resistance of the medium. So, if we were to define attenuation, we could simply say this as the loss of energy of the signal due to resistance of medium. Now this is analogous to uh, a signal sent uh, over the air. It cannot propagate forever. Uh, it cannot propagate till infinite distance because air offers a resistance of 377 ohms. So a continuous resistance will eventually make uh, the signal die out at some point in time. So what happens is that the signal starts off very strong but it faces resistance of the medium uh, during its journey and becomes smaller and smaller, diminishes, uh, relinquishes at the end. And this is similar to the example of uh, uh, if you roll a tire on uh, on the road, it will not roll forever because the friction of the road is eventually going to stop it. So, for example, you have a signal like this at point 1. Now, after traveling certain distance, the signal will become like this. Please note that the shape of the signal remains the same. Nothing, uh, nothing happens to the, the signal's information or shape. If this was the original signal, this could be thought of as the attenuated signal. So what we can do is to rectify it, we can, uh, we can pass it through an amplifier that will further uh, boost the strength of the signal. So that is why repeaters are used 
time and again during during the transmission of the signal so this is what the idea is we send the original signal it gets attenuated then it is passed through the amplifier uh, which, which boosts the signal and it gets to a point where it was intended to be sent now an important property again uh, the the measure of relative strength of uh, two signals at two different points is what we are focusing on so you could you, you could note this keyword down that the measure of relative strength of two signals at two different points is expressed in decibels and it is 10 log 10 p2 upon p1 p2 will be the uh, power of the signal at point 2 which is this one and p1 is the power of the signal at uh, point 1 so that that will that will roughly show us how much the signal has uh, degraded in terms of only its power uh, the shape of the signal being the same the next the next thing that causes impairment in transmission is distortion distortion means that the signal changes its form which is which is not good at all because at the end of the day the receiver will will identify the incoming signal by its form only if the form is distorted this this is the most serious kind of impairment in transmission so um, by the definition we could say that signal changes its form or shape so in other words if we were to draw this let us say we wanted to transmit this signal and what we got was this then it surely is is not a representative of what was actually sent and could be misinterpreted by the receiver and uh, this could happen uh, not only in monotone signals but in composite signals made up of different frequencies also the, the distortion one of the practical examples of distortion is uh, pulse widening that you might have studied in optical transmissions and the third kind of transmission impairment that we have is noise uh, noise is noise is more or less a subset of distortion because uh, noise will also eventually cause the uh, transmitted signals shape to be changed uh, but the shape of the signal changes because of the addition of certain unwanted frequencies from nowhere for example if if an electromagnetic um, electromagnetic wave interferes with the uh, original signal from the atmosphere it will cause some noise to be produced and there are various kinds of noise I've made a separate video on noise like thermal noise induced noise impulse noise electromagnetic wave uh, noise basically the corruption of the signal is what we are talking about here so the key word for noise will be the corru corruption of the signal and how would you represent it uh, you could simply take up a signal and noise are pretty bad spikes and they'll cause a resulting signal which will be which will be an opposite of what was intended to be received so this this might just completely distort everything uh, 
not just in terms of shape but also in terms of the transmitted message and an important parameter is signal to noise ratio and it is expressed in db which is 10 log snr and signal to noise ratio being the power of signal at a received point upon the power of noise so the ratio of received power upon received noise gives us snr and when expressed in decibels it is the signal to noise ratio expressed in decibel a high value of snr means the signal is um, less corrupted by noise so we want this value to be as high as possible uh, by the way the definition of signal to noise ratio is the ratio of average signal power to the average noise power and there are ways and means of calculating average signal power and average noise power mathematically at the receiver end or at the transmission end also because if you wish to calculate noise figure or um, other parameters uh, you would need to calculate the signal to noise ratio at every port on the communication network uh, well that's about it for uh, the discussion of transmission impairments uh, i hope uh, this discussion has cleared up some air about what all things uh, make the uh, signals go corrupt and thank you for watching this video you have a good day and good life ahead bye